Traditional parenting. Silent generation. Chances are you've watched a documentary of an eagle swooping down to catch that one stubborn chick who refused to take cover under its mother's wing. If yes, you already have a good idea of the traditional parenting style. The silent generation parents who used this parenting style would constantly be watching you like a hawk stalking its prey from above. The second you step out of line, they would swoop down on you with a belt in one hand and a disappointed look that could wilt flowers. These parents had no time for heart-to-heart -heart talks or anything. If you're given a list of things to do, you start doing them immediately without complaint, because complaining is a one-way ticket to earn you even more chores. Arguing with your silent generation parent is equally pointless. Before you even start the argument, they give you the iconic because I said so response. And just like that, the argument or disagreement is dead. It's the conversational equivalent of hitting a brick wall, except the wall doesn't ground you afterward. You're trained to always please your parents, which doesn't require a grand performance just to be obedient, respectful, and basically act like a mini adult who happens to still fit in school desks. Gentle parenting. Millennials. Let's say you've been hiking under the hot scorching sun for over 10 hours. Your water bottle's empty and your feet feel like they've trekked across hot coals. However, you finally step into a cool air-conditioned cafe offering free iced coffee and Wi-Fi. Now, that blissful transition from hot to cool is exactly what moving from traditional parenting to gentle parenting feels like. It's like swapping a Viking helmet for a cozy beanie. Same protection, way more comfy. This style of parenting shows parents being really cool with their children, and instead of arguments ending with because I said so, it's now more like, let's talk about your feelings, buddy. The heat from traditional parenting has nearly faded and is now replaced by 24-7 therapy sessions with snack breaks. Gentle parents were all about communication, not the type that involves yelling from the other room. We're talking calm, sit-down discussions where even toddlers get to voice their opinions. So let's say you threw a toy at the cat, your parents would sit you down on the living room floor, help you work on that frustration that you're feeling, then ground you or seize your toy for a day. Discipline in gentle parenting is essentially more of gentle nudges and less of punishment to create a balance. It's like being guided by a friendly GPS voice rather than a drill sergeant. Digital Parenting Gen Z. If you've ever seen the U.S. president strolling through a public place, he's usually escorted by Secret Service agents. These are poker-faced men in dark suits and dark sunglasses watching every corner to ensure the president is safe. Now, digital parenting style is quite similar to how Secret Service agents protect the president. Except instead of being a bodyguard for your children, you're on a never-ending mission to protect them from the wildest corners of the internet. Since Gen Z kids are born tech-savvy and could already use an iPad before figuring out how pacifiers work, it means you'd constantly have to juggle parenting and moderating the wild, wild web. One second, your kid's happily watching Peppa Pig, and the next, they're asking you how to invest in cryptocurrency. You can't even deliberately take their iPads or disconnect the Wi-Fi. That's like declaring World War III, except instead of tanks and troops, you're facing a tantrum so epic it would be filmed as a disaster movie. The only time you can risk Wi-Fi disconnection is when you're using it as the ultimate disciplinary weapon. Heart-to-heart -heart talks are now done in the family group chat, and family bonding time involves everyone sitting in the same room but staring at different screens, like some sort of futuristic sci-fi movie where eye contact and speaking have become obsolete. But all that screen time is like a double-edged sword. On the one hand, YouTube is a godsend because it means you can finally make dinner without your kid clinging to your leg like it's a life raft. On the other hand, you get to worry about your toddler becoming a full-fledged Minecraft addict before they can even spell Minecraft. Eco-parenting, Gen Z. In the eco-parenting style, Gen Z parents literally take Earth as that sick family member that needs care and love. So instead of plastic toys and disposable diapers, you'd be buying wooden toys and cloth nappies. Seriously, if it's not biodegradable or made from recycled materials, it's not making it into the shopping cart. Your main goal as a Gen Z eco-parent is to raise your children with a car carbon footprint so tiny that even ants need a magnifying glass to spot it. So before your kid even hits kindergarten, they've already learned how to grow their own food and are reminding you to turn off the lights when you leave the room. In your home, every day is Earth Day. Meals are sourced fresh from the local farm to the table, and decorations are made out of toilet paper rolls. Screen time is more like green time, because tablets and smartphones have taken a back seat to birdwatching and learning about sustainability. It's like trading in 
video games for virtual reality in the great outdoors. Heart-to-heart -heart talks and bonding are now replaced with fun lessons on conserving energy and weeding a garden together. Even family outings aren't trips to the mall or Disneyland, but adventures to the local farmer's market or a community tree planting event. Discipline has taken a turn from grounding your kids or unplugging the Wi-Fi to having them clean up a beach or plant a tree. Everything in eco-parenting style is all about raising the next generation of eco-warriors, one reusable snack bag at a time. Intensive Parenting Millennials. You might have heard parents complain about parenting being a full-time job and how it can be tough sometimes. Well, some millennials who practice intensive parenting are not only enjoying parenting as a full-time job, but they practically added overtime to parenting. Intensive parenting is characterized by planning and structuring your child's life in a way that guarantees success. It's like parenting crossed paths with a startup mentality, a round-the-clock operation to raise a well-rounded future leader who can code and three languages and meditate before nap time. Before your toddler can say da-da, you've already signed them up for enrichment classes. By kindergarten, their schedule is packed tighter than the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Soccer by four, piano by five, and squeezing in Mandarin lessons before bedtime. When your child steps out of line, it becomes an opportunity to drown them in more homework, followed by a TED Talk on emotional regulation. Everything is an opportunity to learn, even when your child gets an A++ on a test. After praising them, you'd have them study harder than before. As an intensive parent, you'd also be actively involved in everything your child does, from playdates to figuring out which organic gluten-free snack will provide the most brain power for that science fair project. You're basically your child's personal assistant, life coach, and paparazzi all rolled into one. At the end of the day, you're exhausted, but that's just a tiny price to pay in raising the most well-rounded, emotionally intelligent, and successful kids possible. Conscious Parenting Gen Z and Millennials. Conscious parenting is like the yoga of parenting styles, centered, mindful, and sometimes involving actual yoga poses with your toddler. It's parenting meets meditation retreat with a side of deep breathing exercises. Gen Z and Millennial parents embracing this style are all about awareness and connection. It's like you're trying to be the Zen master of the parenting world. There's a lot of inner peace and very little raising of voices. So if your child throws a tantrum at the grocery store instead of threatening to take away their toys or not buy them ice cream, you're down on one knee gently speaking to them about controlling their emotions. No punishment in this style of parenting, only understanding and guidance. But even while you're helping your child express their feelings, you're also using that opportunity to learn how to be patient with your child and become an active listener. Every moment is an opportunity for you and your child to learn how to create a harmonious household where everyone's voice is heard, even if that voice is currently babbling and throwing cereal on the floor. Conscious parenting style takes empathy to a whole new level. You don't just want your kids to behave, you're training them to understand why they should behave and grow into emotionally mature adults. Authoritative parenting modern day style focused on communication. Picture this, you're on the basketball team and it's match day. When you make a shot, your coach is the first to cheer louder than the crowd, and when you miss a pass, he'll call a timeout and show you a better technique and listen to your ideas for new moves. He's the perfect mix of tough and encouraging, which is exactly how authoritative parenting works. This style of parenting is like being a really good sports coach. You set the rules of the game, but you're also your kid's biggest cheerleader. Think of it as the Goldilocks of parenting styles. Not not too strict, not too lenient, but just right. You have high expectations for your child, but you're also super supportive, making sure your kids have both the guidance and freedom to grow. This makes communication a very important tool in your household. So while you're setting up firm rules, you're also explaining the why behind each of these rules. It's like being a benevolent boss who actually cares about employee morale. When the rules are broken, there's a reasonable consequence behind it, followed by a heart-to-heart -to, -heart to ensure understanding. It's all well-balanced, like a well-made cappuccino, equal parts strong and sweet. Negotiation parenting, current trend of allowing child input. If you get a promotion at work before signing the new contract, you'd first discuss the terms for your salary and other benefits with HR. Now, negotiation parenting is kind of like that, but instead of discussing salary, you're discussing terms of a highly contested bedtime with your child. You'd literally give your child a seat at the table and involve them in decision-making to help them develop critical thinking skills skills and a sense of autonomy. So instead of commanding
recommending your child to eat his broccoli, you'd ask him if he'd like to eat broccoli or carrots. You're practically offering your child choices that lead to the same desired outcome while making him feel empowered. Now, because everything in your household is up for discussion, it makes the rules a little bit bendable. Let's say curfew is 8 p.m. and your child wants to extend to 8.30 p.m. You could agree only if your child also agrees to complete his homework and tidy his room. It's kind of like haggling at a market, but instead of bargaining over the price of fish, you're negotiating screen time limits. Even discipline is a collaborative effort. If anyone breaks a rule, a family meeting would be held to discuss the appropriate punishment together. Doing this already fosters communication and bonding. Talk about killing three birds with one stone. As kids in a negotiation parenting household get older, they tend to have valuable life skills like communication, compromise, and respect for everyone's opinion. Fear-based parenting, early 20th century. To paint you a picture of the early 20th century, gather all the horror movies you've ever watched, crank them to 11, and release them into the world to go wild. It'd still not match up to the horrors of the early 20th century. You see, this period was when the Spanish flu, polio, and World War I all decided to show up at once, like a really bad surprise party. And because every parent wants to keep their little ones alive by any means, they adopted fear-based parenting. In fear-based parenting, you'd use a healthy dose of fear to keep your child from getting polio or mixing with the bad crowd. The goal is to keep your child healthy and as far away from fun as possible. However, the kind of fear you'd use to scare the snot out of your child would not be the regular boogeyman is under the bed kind of fear. Instead, you're scaring them with fatal germs and war talks. So let's say you caught your kid playing where they shouldn't. You tell them stories of how other kids caught polio from playing too close to a dangerous puddle. Fear-based parenting was next-level psychological warfare, but it worked and is probably why your granddad survived the early 20th century. However, the problem was that making your kids think they're living in constant terror isn't exactly the best recipe for raising confident, well-adjusted humans. Kids grew up thinking the world was a giant mousetrap just waiting for them to make one wrong move. Latchkey parenting. Generation X. In today's world, when your child comes home from school, you're probably waiting at the door like a wholesome TV mom, ready with freshly baked cookies and questions about their day. But if this was the mid-1960s, your child would be their own personal doorman, letting themselves into the house, making their own snack, and probably even teaching themselves how to use the microwave before you even knew how to turn it on. This was basically the latchkey parenting approach for Generation X, an era where parents were too busy chasing the American dream to worry about after-school snack time, leaving their kids to fend for themselves without adult supervision. The idea was simple. Hand the kid a key and hope they don't burn the house down while reheating leftovers. It's basically the sink or swim approach to parenting, except the parents weren't even hanging around to throw a life jacket in the pool. The term latchkey literally comes from the fact that kids wore house keys around their necks like it was some cool necklace. Latchkey parents believe that leaving their kids to run their their own lives like miniature CEOs is the best way to teach them responsibility. It was basically a crash course in adulting before anyone even knew the term adulting existed. The parenting style practically forced children to become pros at being independent and resilient, but it also gave birth to a generation that learned more life lessons from unsupervised TV than their actual parents. Disciplinarian Parenting post-World War II era. If you've ever been to a military boot camp or attended a military boarding school, you've probably already had a taste of what disciplinarian parenting in the post-World War II era was like. This parenting style revolved around order and structure with the goal of raising tough and responsible children. You see, most parents from this era had tough military training that would give Forrest Gump a run for his money, and they also fought in the war. So when they finally made it home alive, they brought back all those military experiences with them and practically ruled their family like it was an army squad. So if you were a kid in this era, your day would probably start with you waking up as early as 5 a.m. You'd make your bed with military precision, and in one hour, you'd already be dressed for school and sitting at the breakfast table like it's a formal meeting. You dare not forget to thank your mom and dad after having breakfast, else you'd be grounded for a day or two. And if you're caught playing outside when you haven't finished your homework, that's a one-way ticket to being grounded for a month. Every rule was set in stone, much like the 
the Ten Commandments. There was zero wiggle room and literally no room for warm family bonding. Disciplinarian parents believed that discipline was the secret sauce for success, so the answer to almost everything was strict rules and consequences. However, this type of discipline helped kids survive in the post-war world, where toughness and obedience were prized like gold stars on a chore chart. Thank <laughs> you.